I Love Mortgage Brokering, episode 30. Want to learn from the top 5% of mortgage brokers in the country? Then you have come to the right place. Join Scott Peckford on I Love Mortgage Brokering. Hi, Broker Nation. I am thrilled to introduce our guest today. Bernadette Laxamana is a mortgage broker with Ziva Mortgage. She's been a broker for 11 years, is based at a Burnaby, BC, and was number 53 on CMP's top 75 list last year. I'm absolutely stoked about this interview today. Bernadette, are you ready to rock? I am, definitely. Awesome. Could you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, First of all, I I feel very honored to be invited on your show, uh, Scott, and I think it's a great thing you're doing, and to hear the different viewpoints from different brokers across Canada is immensely helpful and a great um, endeavor. Congratulations, Scott. Thank you. And Nobody's getting more benefit more than me, because all these conversations (laughs) are definitely helping me a ton, so... Okay, excellent. Okay, let's see. A little bit about myself. Um, I'm an early bird. Every day I get up at 4 a.m. I spend half an hour to 45 minutes to pray. Then I either read or work out before getting ready for work and the kids. I have two kids, Tyra, who's 13, and Justin, who's 10. I always have breakfast with them in the morning and drive them to school. I am big on family traditions and routine. Um, So together as a family, we have weekly date nights or movie nights, schedule an outing once a week. We go to church once a week, family meetings. Um, And together, we experience so much bonding with that. I have a great marriage. My husband works with me at Ziva Mortgage. He's a director of IT. He's my bock, my better half, who fully accepts me, warts and all. And I've been married for 15 years. I love learning. Yeah, 15 years. That's that's awesome. Um, (laughs) Yes. I love learning. I take at least one course or seminar per year. I read, I would say, two to three books a month. It could be business-related, self-improvement, or spiritual. So that's me um, about my business. Um, In terms of operations, I have an administrative assistant, and I'm also privileged to be part of Ziva and enjoy the benefits of our fully experienced underwriting pool. They take care of all my deals when it's, once it goes live from that point until funding. All top producers at Ziva use the, the um, underwriting desk. So that's great in terms of operations. Right. So it's a flexible, think, flexible work staff that you, don't, you, you pay for as you use. Yeah. And the good thing about them is they have about 10 years of experience, right? And, and if you think about it, if they're doing the production of, of the company, their wealth of knowledge it's going to be way more than my portfolio, right? So it's a great, it's a great department that we have. And how did you get into the mortgage business? Because no one starts, you know, when you were a little girl, you, when you were in kindergarten and they asked what you wanted to be, you didn't say, I want to be a mortgage broker. So how did you get to, to here where you are for the last 11 years? Well, um, I was working in a bank. I was in banking at Canadian Western Bank for 10 years. On my ninth year as an account manager, my boss who hired me the first time became a mortgage broker. And she came up to me, even though she wasn't my boss, she was in a different uh, branch at the time. And she said, Bernadette, you should be a mortgage broker. I'm like, mortgage, huh? I'm like, what is that? And she goes, just trust me. I know you. I work with you. Just take the course and be one. You'll be great. And I'm like, okay. So I took the course, but after I passed, I chickened out. I said, oh, my God, there's no way I can leave my cushiony $40,000 a year job and just go 100% commission. can't do it. And um, I think God intervened because while I was taking a course, a lady who owns a mortgage brokerage company in Surrey called me and said, "Um, I got your name from the list of uh, students. And uh, when you graduate, why don't you think, think about joining me? And I said, sure, whatever. I let it pass. Well, I've forgotten about her. This was, this was like about six months later. But my branch manager assigned me to call on her office. We were given a list of cold calls because I was a commercial um, account manager. And we, he wanted us to market the bank services to different mortgage brokerage company. And that company who called me a few months ago was coincidentally on that list. That's awesome. That's odd. <laughs> it's like divine providence. Um so I met with her, and then she asked me, I think I remember your name. I said, yeah, you called me a few months ago. And she goes, what are you doing, wasting your time in the bank? I said, I'm scared. And she goes, I think you'll do great, she said. And worst case, worst 
come or if worse comes to worse, it doesn't work out, you can always go back back to banking. And so I'm like, okay, fine. I talked to my husband and then I said to myself, well, what if I'm 80 years old and I look back on this time? Will I regret not even trying? You know, just being scared and not even trying. So I said, okay, fine. No, you don't want to do that. So I did. And uh, fortunately for me, I made more money in my nine months of mortgage brokers than my annual income and plus benefits at the bank. And I was doing pretty well since then. Right. That's outstanding. That's a, that's a great example of, you know, taking the plunge. And, and I agree with you that I've heard once before someone said there's two types of regrets. There's a type of regret where you try something and it doesn't work out and you feel like, oh, you know, I shouldn't have done that. And then there's a type of regret that you, you didn't even try or attempt it. So you don't even know what would have happened. And that type of regret stings more and lasts longer. So good on you for just jumping in and, and, you know, giving up that $40,000 a year cushy job you had. Um, and, and seriously, like it's, that, that's a, that's a fantastic example of what's possible when you know you, you put the work in and, and you take it takes a little bit of risk so good for you well it's, it's funny you notice that because that's usually what i do sometimes when i want to try something i go back like forward when i'm 80 and i look back okay are you gonna regret not doing it if the answer is yes and i'm like okay do it <laughs> that's how i always approach big decisions in my life that's a that's awesome. So I also like I love quotes and I love how quotes take an idea and they distill it down into something that's portable and you can take with you. So can you share a quote that's really had an impact on your life or business? Well, mine is ever since I was young, it's aim high and hit the mark. I like this quote because when I aim for the stars and I miss, I may land on the moon, which I think is still pretty high. So that's so, always been my my guiding quote. And how, how have you applied that quote to your, like, give me an example of something. You talked about making the jump from, you know, being the, in the bank business to brokering. But can you share another example of how you've applied that aim high philosophy? Oh, yeah. Because I've always been like that. Um, for example, since I was young, um, from elementary, high school, every year, I've always graduated or passed with honors. I've always wanted um, to get an award every year. So I've always been top of my class. I, when I was 12, my mom um, left to work abroad. And my dad left the family to be with another woman. And so I was 12 and I was raising my three siblings on my own. Even though I didn't have my parents physically present to guide me, I still managed to receive honors and awards year after year because I had that internal drive for excellence. At work, I got promoted every year. I said to myself, I wanted to be the best person that has ever occupied that position. And every time I held a job, I always strived for a goal. As a mortgage broker, I strive to be one of the best and will continue to do so. It's in my blood, I think. So, yeah. So, uh, just uh, you, you said something about you when you were 12, you had to raise your siblings. So, like, did you literally live on your own or did you have, like, some yeah. kind of... Well, I had a, we had a maid um, uh, who helped me, but I didn't have... No, I didn't have... A, a, the maid was, like, three years older than me, but I was the one running the household. Right. You're, so, so nobody was. You basically were taking, making sure everybody got to school, making sure everybody had their lunches and yeah. did their homework, and exactly, and made sure that you know we had the school supplies, we had the tuition, um, you know, to pay for all of that. And I remember there were actually times, Scott, that we didn't have food for the week, and I had to go borrow from from a, a neighbor uh, because back home we have these stores where they sell food in like big pots and that's a meal for the family. And I remember raking up our bill for like a week because we just didn't have food. Because either my mom didn't want to send because he, he was, she was having a dispute with my dad or my dad didn't want to send. And yeah, I, I did all that at 12. Wow. That's, that's, that's crazy. So it's definitely made you into the person you are though, um, for sure, you know, and, and obviously you're very capable at whatever you put your mind to. So I, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about failure. Cause I find that for me, when I look back on, I've had failures as a mortgage broker, as an entrepreneur and a business owner, but looking back, there's always a lesson. So can you share an example of something that you failed at, but then when you look back, there was a lesson in it for you? Oh, there's a huge one. Remember I told you about goal setting? Well, I wanted to get to 100 million fast. And so I hired three account managers in the span of two years. And uh, February 2013, I was minus 77,000. Red, in the red for 77K. I have never had a loss, never had a out negative outcome like that. 
I've always hit my goals. So this was a huge hit on my spirit. So I was engaging in negative scrambling behaviors. I was unhappy. And then I I came across Callum Ross. And he told me about the Todd Duncan um, Sales Mastery Boot Camp. And so I went. This was in May 2013. And um, Todd Duncan said that the something has, same thing happened to his company. And he learned the two biggest mistakes that he made where he let somebody else handle the sales and that he didn't pay attention to the numbers, the exact mistakes that I did. I let my people handle, handle the sales, and I think I was not paying too much attention to the numbers because they knew subconsciously that I was losing money. So I came back mm-hmm. and I said to my team, I'm going to be handling sales, prospecting, and all that. I will be the one to talk to clients, and our numbers and conversion ratios should improve. But then they were already quite unhappy because we were losing. Before that point, I was already engaging. I told you as uh, different scrambling behaviors that was just negative. Now, after I said that, they were already unhappy. I said that. And so they became more unhappy and they all quit. I was so miserable and depressed because all my people left me. And I was, I still had that negative number looming in my head. Well, those, those things have since passed. I was, with, with God's help, I was able to turn the company around. I said with God's help because I remember in February sobbing in my bedroom. And I said to God, okay, here it is. I surrender. I give it all up to you. I'm sorry for whatever I did that created these results. And I just leave it up to you. And after that, that's when I met Callum and went, met Todd and all that stuff. So just fast forward this year, I was able to turn the company around. I was doing better than my three account managers. I went from being in the red to mortgage-free. I paid off my mortgage in my house. I paid off my mortgage in my office. So it's a nice feeling now to be working because I love what I'm doing, not because I have to pay the bills. Wow, that's awesome. So that, that that's a failure that turned into you've obviously learned the lesson and applied it and and uh, turned the corner on it. So. So when the account managers left, you probably fit, at first felt a little bit like, oh, abandoned. But probably looking back now, it probably wasn't a bad thing that you... No, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. Right. No, that's 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 wild. Good for you for... And, and it obviously, sometimes it's just that, that training or that, you know, the inspiration of being around people. Like you said, the Todd Duncan group or the training that you took and Callum Ross was, was able to help you um, get out of that rut. And we call it in our family, stinking thinking when you start kind of getting down that negative mindset and um, obviously you've... I like that. Yes, thinking, thinking. I was like that, really, really into that, so that at that point, Brad. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. That was a very, that was a very personal story to share, but I think it, all, we can all learn something from from what you talked about. That's like, I know that I've made, yeah. I don't want to talk about me, cause, but, I, but I think that was, a, that was a fantastic story. So as a mortgage broker, one of the things I've noticed that successful brokers have processes and systems and they, in order to be successful, and they tweak them to make them better. So can you share an example maybe of an administrative process that wasn't working as well as you'd like and then how you tweaked it and what kind of outcome you got? Well, I think the biggest one is was I shared a little bit was um, I was doing the sales, the underwriting, <laughs> and all that stuff and thinking I could do it all. And then I, um, I decided to let go and give that to the underwriting department. Best thing I ever did. And I have tweaked it so well that I've gotten so dependent on them that it's funny. I sent a deal last week and I said, oh, okay, I'll just send this in because it looks straightforward. Well, it came back with so many mistakes. And the underwriter said to me, never, ever send a deal in <laughs> by yourself. You don't know how to do it anymore. I'm like, okay, it's great. I, I, I passed that. So awesome. Now so you tried to submit it I- through Phylogix yourself, you mean? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Oh my, oh my gosh. She had to she had to resubmit it all because there was a lot of areas in there that were just wrong. <laughs> right. That, that's awesome. And on the yeah. sales side, I, kn- I know that you, you, like you were talking about, you tried to hire account managers and, and realized that you can't really outsource the sales part of it because that's kind of the, your core, um, you know, one of your core gifts. So can you share an example of a sales process that maybe wasn't working as well as you'd like? And then a tweak that you made and what outcome you got from it? Sure. Um, I didn't used to have, this is what I learned from the core training. I didn't have a lead tracker, called it. 
so my old process or lead comes and I call them and then I, I, it's either in my inbox or in my little notebook or somewhere. Well, I use a lead tracker and I track all my leads. And um, the goal of the lead tracker is that I convert all the leads, at least to thir- like 35% of the leads that come in, I set it to an appointment or a pre-approval, something along those lines. Um, having the lead tracker allowed me to be more grateful and to be to feel more um, more of a sense of achievement every day. I didn't realize how many leads I get in a day until I had a lead tracker. And then um, the goal of the lead tracker as well is for every lead that I get, I have to call that lead eight at least eight times, or they actually say to me, "I no, I, I don't want to deal with you." Blah blah. Whichever comes first. But the fact that I follow up on these leads and I keep track of them um, has improved my process, my sales process a lot. I've seen, I've been able to convert a lot of those leads more than, you know, higher than 40%. And I see that I'm more engaged with the leads that are coming in. So that, that one particular tool has improved my sales process a lot, the lead tracker. That's awesome. I, I was, be, I spoke with Jesse Johnson uh, a couple of weeks ago or a week or so ago and he talked about the same thing and so on the on the lead side I got a couple of questions about this on the lead side do you have like a specific goal of leads per day or per week or how, how do you sort of you how do you kind of is there a me, like a measuring stick you're using to for yourself it's, no I don't it's funny I don't um, aim for I say at least one lead a day um, but I normally get more than that so that I don't look at uh, I have to have a lead a day, which is great because I do get a lead a day. My goal has been to convert the lead because they said um, it's not the number of leads, it's how you convert it that matters, right? Right. So you could have uh, one lead a day and convert that to 80%, then you don't really need to have five kind of things. So mm-hmm. so my goal has always been on the conversion, not to actually have how many leads in a day. And and then on that the call tracker thing that you used. So is it a particular software program or how are you doing it? Oh, it's it's just an Excel basic Excel program. It's what the core people um, use. There's a lead tracker and there's also a greatness tracker, which tracks how much um, um, active prospecting calls you do. And my goal is to call out ten people a day, and there's a schedule on who to call every day that I follow as well. And to be honest with you, the before I was scared to call, but after getting into the habit for a couple of weeks, um, now that it's so busy again, it's hard for me to make those 10 calls, but I miss it. I love it. I got to the point that, oh my God, I wish I could make my calls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so that's, that's the other thing that together with the lead tracker and the greatness tracker, I've been able to successfully know that I can turn on the tab and I can grow this business as much as I want um, if I just have the right uh, mindset and the tracking mm-hmm. and the goals in place. Yeah. And then okay, so one more point on this because I love I love this whole thing you're talking about and you're a machine, Bernadette. I don't think you realize this, but you're like I love the everything that we've been talking about. So on this eight times that you contact them, like are they all phone calls or are they emails or are they combination? Phone calls. Phone calls. I do phone, I may do email, but it's always, always phone calls. Phone calls. Okay, yeah, that's that's great advice too. Mm-hmm. Wow, we could stop the interview right now and I'd be totally happy with everything that I've got. So, But we're not going to. <laughs> we're going to keep going because there's there's some more good stuff coming. Oh, yeah. Cool. So, I, I um on the on the topic of diversification. So I've been having these conversations. It seems to me that there's kind of two two camps out there. The one camp says you need to diversify. You need to get share of wallet. Another camp says no, no, just be really good at mortgage brokering and refer out everything else. So, what's your sort of take on diversification? And if you are diversifying, what area are you focusing on? Um, I was in the other camp. I used to have an insurance license. And the reason why I had the insurance license, because somebody said, you know, there's that other area that you're not tapping into. Um, unfortunately, you know, other, you know, you could be making money in that area and stuff like that. So I held on to my license, but I gave it up. The reason I gave it up is this. The only reason why I had that side of the business is not because I love it, 
The only reason why I had that side of the business is because I wanted more money, a bit more money. I wanted a, uh, another faucet in that area because somebody else is making money. Give, give, let me have a dip on that on that bucket, so call it. But I wasn't an expert. You know, I told you I wanted to be excellent in whatever I do. When I had my insurance license, I was not an expert. I wasn't excellent. I wasn't the best. And I was selling something because I wanted the money, not because I knew what was best for the client. So I was not. Yeah, it was like, ugh, I didn't really enjoy that side of the business. And so now what I've done is I have a partner that I refer that and so every time there's an insurance, I referred it to that person, and that person has referred a lot of people to me. And so my goal this year is to just keep selling my partners, my my financial planner, my my insurance broker, my realtors to the clients who already know me, love me, and trust me for being a mortgage broker and nothing else. <laughs> right. No, that's awesome. I, I wrote down the number one thing that this is that I'm going to put this in the in the notes is the number one thing you should ask before getting your insurance license, which is why am I doing it? Is it about the money or is it about the fact that I think I can like I like you said, you can't be excellent at two different disciplines. I don't think but um, and you can't love them both with the same intensity. How could you? It's like having two husbands, right? <laughs> My wife jokes sometimes that she wishes she had another wife just to help her out, but um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I would never win an argument and it would be just terrible for me. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> They'd gang up. I would be, that would be it. I'd be, I'd be done. So she, it's yeah, a joke, well, of course. But, but it, 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 it is funny because my husband would probably agree with you the same thing. <laughs> but, but you said something about mortgage broking. You know, doing that's what I love to do, and and that's that's I think what I'd continue to do because I can tweak that so many times and not be and and still be able to tweak it some more. But in terms of diversifying, um, the one area that I'd love for, to grow is Ziva. I'd love more mortgage brokers to join our team. Right, that's cool. the area that I I I invest my time on, if if not on my business, but on Ziva. And uh, there'll be uh, links to your guys' site from I Love Mortgage Brokering so people can track you down. And uh, you, you kind of alluded on this in the intro. You talked about how you have scheduled family. So how do you balance running a busy mortgage ah. practice and family? <laughs> Two key things. Goal setting and scheduling. Knowing what's truly important to me. It, like deep down inside. And I say that because before I say family is important, but really work was more important. I'm being candid here. <laughs> um, so now I deeply know that family is important and my relationship with God is more important. So what I've done is because that's now truly important to me, I've scheduled that. In order to give more time to those things that are important to me, I get up at 4 a.m., <sighs> Because because otherwise, if I don't do that, then I won't have time to pray. I won't have time to prepare stuff with my kids. I won't be able to have time to have breakfast for them. So so then I've created space for that. And so and then I said, okay, church is important, so I scheduled it. Everything that's important, schedule it. Don't say yeah 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 that's important, but you don't put it on schedule. So everything that's scheduled happens. They're treated as sacred. Church time, prayer time at night is sacred. Um, and then weekly dates with my husband is sacred. It's every Wednesday. And then dates with my kids is Saturdays after church. So that's scheduled. Um, weekly movie nights is scheduled. Family fun is scheduled. Everything that are important gets scheduled. And then Everything else fits in the other boxes. If I have to meet with a client because clients cannot meet with me during the week, so I meet them at nighttime, that doesn't mean I meet with somebody at night every day, right? That means it takes time with the most important thing, my family. So two days out of the week, I would stay late. But then the other days of the week, I would be home with my family. And once I'm home, that's it. No phone calls. No, nothing. Just focus on them. And my goal is two to three hours every night for family. So every morning I spend time with them two to three hours and night two to three hours I spend because those are the key things for me. And the weekends is theirs as well. Wow. You, you are, that's awesome. That's great advice. Goal setting and scheduling is yes. it's critical for fitting in the priorities in life. 
Yep. It's, it's, it's a combination. You can't just goal set and no schedule because you know what? It's just going to get buried with other stuff. Okay, so I'm going to move to the rapid fire questions. You can answer these with a little shorter answers if you like. So what is the number one thing holding back most mortgage brokers from being successful? Prospecting, prospecting, prospecting. We forget that we should never stop prospecting. That was three things. So <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I do my best to make ten to fifteen calls a day, and I don't and I don't want to stop that. So right. I, I think mortgage brokers once they, they become successful, that's the first thing that falls off. Mm -hmm. And then once they become you know quite oh yeah I get referrals and then we get so proud that we we work by referral, <sighs> and so we don't we stop calling. So that's mm -hmm. the number one thing I think prospecting. Well, what what thing or habit? What one thing or habit has made you successful? Goal oriented and being excellence driven. I tried not having a goal and I became so complacent and lazy. But did not like that. Not cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you have an internet resource, a software program you use to make your business more successful? GoMax is my CRM. I love GoMax. Um, I get emails from clients saying, "Yeah, great, you, you remembered my birthday. Thanks for remembering." I'm like, "Yeah, right, I did that." <laughs> or I see them on the street and they say, "I love the articles that you send me. They're so beneficial." And um, I have clients signing up for the Rate Watch and the different things that's with GoMax, and so that's my number one um, uh, resource. For for growing my business, I think. Right. Okay. And then you and if there's any, I think you mentioned something about um, an internet tool or something mm -hmm. as well. Um, I also do annual client appreciation events. Uh, this year, I did um, the screening of Transformers, and I had 500 people watch that movie. And I use Eventbrite to manage that. Before uh, a couple of years ago. I did it all manually. It was a horrible, horrible experience. It was a lot of man hours, but Eventbrite, imagine I was able to organize, manage everything through that tool for 500 people. So um, for, for events, Eventbrite, Eventbrite is a great tool. That's awesome. Transformers is a fun movie too. Yeah. If you could recommend one book for our listeners, what would it be? Because you, you said you like to read. So what, what book would you say, this is the one you should read if you want to be better as a mortgage broker? Raving Fans by Ken Blanchard. You could read it fully in one sitting, I promise you. It's highly recommended by the core trainers as well. Cool. I, I have that one on my shelf. Actually, I read it many years ago, but maybe I'll pull it out again. There you go. You should. And awesome. Here's one of my favorite questions. Remember the movie Back to the Future? Yep. And so in the movie, there's the DeLorean, the car that can travel in time. So if you could jump in the DeLorean and I set the date, you don't get to pick the time. Uh, so I picked the date to the first day 11 years ago when you were thinking about making a jump into the mortgage business. What three things would you tell yourself so that you'd have a better business uh, today? Keep prospecting. That is what you do best. Do not let that go. Your staff can handle everything else. Keep prospecting. Call 15 people a day. Number one. Number two, sign up for core training. You're going to go through so many courses in the next 11 years, and the course is the best. So do that. Don't waste your time on anything else. <laughs> do that from day one. Finally, invest in a strong CRM program. GoMax is the best. You're, you're going to like GoMax. So, I'm, yeah. I'm sure Daryl French would love to hear you say that. <laughs> 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 so there invest go. in GoMax. So keep prospecting 15 calls a day. Sign up for the training, the core training. And then the third one was get something like GoMax. Um, to take care of your a CRM for you. That's right. Well, Bernadette, I have absolutely loved this interview. It's been it's been awesome. Where can people find you online? Belaxamana.com. And are you guys hiring? Yes, I am. I am hiring. I'm looking for I call it a loan partner number two to help me to help me with um, servicing my clients. Yes. Right. And what about and then Ziva? Obviously, that's a that's a your your partner in Ziva, right? Yes, I am a partner in Ziva. We're looking for a um, somebody who could help us uh, in terms of recruiting. Yes. Right. Okay. We need a we need a sales manager to assist us in that area. So, uh, well, everybody listening, if you're uh, you can check out the show notes at ilovemortgagebrokering dot com. There'll be links to Bernadette's site as well as all the stuff that we talked about. Bernadette, I'm convinced you're going to rock the rest of your year and I, I hope that uh, I hope that next year is even better for you 
Thank you, and I feel the exact same way about you, Scott. Thank you so much for having me on your show, and uh, more power to your future shows. Thank you. Want to learn from the top five mortgage brokers in the country? Then you have come to the right place. Join Scott Peckford on I Love Mortgage Brokering. Hey, Broker Nation, Scott Peckford here. Have you joined our VIP club for mortgage brokers yet? If not, you're missing out. We share exclusive content not available on the web or the show. We share scripts, step-by-step -step guides, and other insider tips to help you save time and make you more money. I can't tell you how many times after I turn off the recorder, a guest starts sharing some awesome advice or a script or, or a tip, and I take the best of this and share it with my VIPs. If you want to get on the list, visit ilovemortgagebrokering.com slash VIP. That's ilovemortgagebrokering.com slash VIP. Oh, and one other thing. Since this is exclusively for mortgage brokers, there is a skill testing question. Good luck, and I hope you continue to rock your mortgage biz.